let's just sew whatever. Hey everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we are going to be making the zip and go clutch from KMG Designs. Uh, OMG KMG, I love this wristlet. Um, it is a wonderful size. It has card slots on the inside and is just so fast to make. Um, I used uh, an Oxford canvas for the entire bag and I only use um, SF 101 on the exterior pieces just to add a little bit extra thickness and it didn't make it harder to sew or anything but I do think it gives a little extra oomph to the bag. Um, I also added this piping to the outer edge because um, the size of it reminds me of the For the Love of Change wristlet that I have. Um, so you could even add like an applique to this fabric or add an overlay. You could do all kinds of things with the shape of it. Um, but it's just a really great quick little wristlet. So I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Editing Lauren here to say that I'm dumb and this pattern is the clip and zip wristlet. <laughs> Sorry. We're going to start off by prepping our card slots. Um, so I've got everything folded nicely and ironed, of course, and you do want to make sure that you've got a little bit left over on the bottom. And then before you even start your card slot, something you can do is just kind of check to make sure they work well. I always like to have some little card pieces handy. Look, looking good. Hopefully I've folded those correctly. It's done a little bit differently than I'm used to, um, but she does have video links in the pattern. Um, so as you're going through it, you can just click on that link and it'll take you right to a video that explains how to do that step. Oh, we're starting off great. Okay, and then I just finished off that stitch. I didn't check my bobbin before I started this. Um, so it does say in the pattern there should be one inch from the top and then half an inch from the top line here. So you can kind of refold if you need to or just double check. And then we're going to top stitch this card slot piece. I'm really excited for this pattern. Um, kind of popped up in my news feed and it seemed like the perfect project for this water resistant canvas. Um, so I asked Kristen if I could make a video. She said yes. And here we are. So I want to line up all my card slots there. And we're going to Sew this with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, and the top actually, I think I'm going to try this. It might be more of a pain than it's worth. Yeah, no worries. I was trying to do, oh wait, no, this is what I wanted to do. So you have to fold that edge over to close it off. So I was thinking about using that little trick we use in the zipper pocket where we just kind of fold all of that up. Yeah, this will work. And I'm just going to gently trim there at an angle to reduce the bulk. So I messed up, but that's okay. I was able to undo it. <clears throat> so because I folded that top edge over, we're just gonna kind of roll that over. And we're going to find the center of this piece and butterfly open that seam. Okay. 
and add a clip. And I think if you wanted to add a woven label, this might be, no, we'll add it when we top stitch the pockets into place. So we're gonna sew down that Now we can turn it. <laughs> and poke out our corners. down that top edge. And kind of pressing this open. It's a little bulky, but not too terrible. So I'm gonna clip the bottom. this flat there we go and we want to close off the top and you can see that this is all the way open and then this one here is card slots. So what you can do, honestly I was thinking about it and it wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing to have this completely open, um, especially like if you have a particularly shaped bill or something, um, but we'll go ahead and close it off as per the pattern instruction. So we're just gonna sew down that seam. Quilters would call this stitching in the ditch. And that will close off both sides. For cards. So you can put a card there. You can put a card there. And then same for back. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight card slots. And there is room to top stitch in place. So that's good. And we're gonna grab one of our lining pieces and sew that into place. We're gonna find the center, but we're gonna move it over just slightly because of the zipper tab, etc. So we'll just kind of place it right about there. So I would say there's two, two inches on that side and like an inch and a half on this side. And we will top stitch that in place. And then I was thinking a woven label could go like right in here. So I am using the water resistant canvas that will be available on my website. I believe it's similar to Oxford canvas. Um, it is nowhere near as thick as the Ottertex waterproof canvas. So it's working great for this project. I'm really excited to try out some wallets with it. So I thought this would be a really, really good one to start with. We'll go ahead and pull that thread to the back. So there is our lining panel with our card slots complete. Uh, so the next thing we wanna work on is our wristlet strap. And I'm going a little bit out of order. I just like to get all my little pieces out of the way. Um, I love this style wristlet. 
where the wristlet strap is part of the closure in a way. I think it's really, really fun. It reminds me of like coach wristlets and stuff like that. So we are just folding in the long raw edges. And I could have used a little bit of interfacing in the strap, but I just kind of wanted to see what it felt like without any. Okay, and then we'll fold this in. snap hook and you can rivet that into place or sew it into place whatever you feel comfortable with I went ahead and folded that raw edge under and I'll go ahead and sew that threads so we want to leave this open because that's going to get sewn into the side seam of the bag and then this clips to the zipper and then you can unzip it to open it so we'll set that aside for now as well okay so this is not part of the pattern however I wanted to have a little bit of fun with it um, the shape of this kind of reminds me of my For the Love of Change wristlet, and I always love adding piping to that. So I'm going to go ahead and try to add some piping to this one. So I'm going to measure three quarters of an inch from the top edge and make a little line on either side so I know where to start and stop with the piping. Um, my friend Alyssa sent me this piping. I can't remember who it's from, but I think they even have it on Amazon, but you can see it's kind of a reflective rainbow. And it's way, 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 way too small for handbags, but I thought for this, it could be perfect. It's super thin. Um, and this wristlet has a 3 8 inch seam allowance, so that should be perfect for adding this. So I'm gonna line this up and just baste the piping in place along that outer edge. Going around the curve. I did interface my exterior panels with a woven interfacing. I thought about using like so fuse plus but I think it would have just been way too thick because you got to think you're going to fill this with things um, which is really gonna make it stiffer over time so you don't want it to be way too stiff that it can't kind of stretch or change shape when you fill it <laughs> And I'm just folding the edges at a 90 degree angle. When I get there. There we go. And then I'm just 
gonna trim off the edge here. And I just kind of block interface this piece. So I'm gonna trim off all that extra interfacing. And then this is my front panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little label. In the pattern, it has um, label placement. And I was like, you know what? I have these little leather tags I had made and I never use them. Well, I rarely use them, I should say. So let's do it. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of double-sided tape to hold it into place whilst I sew around the edge. And any extra that you've taken off the spool can just get folded back inside. And we're just gonna lay that there. Why not? pulling those threads to the back. Alrighty. And then we will baste our wristlet strap into place. We can work on the zipper. I'm gonna go ahead and iron my zipper. This is an eight inch piece. There we go. We're gonna iron this. You can see there's some little waves within it and those will reflect in our project if we don't iron it. Okay, now I'm gonna use this zipper jig. You do not need to use this kind of a tool. You can do it with your fingers. I just find it to be so much quicker. This clamps to the table. I don't have to hold anything. And you wanna go out at an angle, make sure your teeth, your tape is lining up at the same angle and pull down. So quick. Although the first time I used it, it took me a very long time to figure out how to do it. And then we're gonna be folding off the edges of our zipper at an angle. Zipper tab. Beep, beep, beep. Come on. There we go. So fold those edges in. Probably should use double sided tape for this. All 
right, so I've now got everything set up on my table. So, wait a minute. I had it set up the way I wanted it, but then I changed my mind. <laughs> We're gonna start with the front panel and you want your zipper pull facing this way and then you want your lining piece to be the one without card slots. And then this is my back panel and this is my lining piece with the card slots. So we're gonna attach this here first. I am going to use my eighth inch wide double-sided tape on that zipper just cause, why not? Makes life so much easier. I'm just gonna apply a little bit. Face down, centered. You want to make sure that you've got enough room on each side to um, sew the bag shut, of course. And then you can baste that zipper into place if you want, or because I'm using double-sided tape, I'll just grab another piece of double-sided tape to hold my lining. Oh, come on. My nails are like just awkwardly long enough, but everything's a little trickier. <laughs> but they're so pretty. Oh, did I already scuff it up? Yeah, whatever. I painted my nails last night. I'm not worried about it. I knew what I was getting into. All right, so <laughs> exterior face up, zipper face down, lining piece without card slots, face down, lining up nicely. sure those edges line up and then I'm going to flip this over shake the camera a whole lot so you get dizzy oh didn't really mean to and then we're going to sew down that seam and then I'm getting close to my zipper pull so I'm going to leave my needle in and zip the zipper away And then in the pattern, it says you can top stitch through the exterior and the lining, but I am going to, well, if you do that, you wanna make sure you're only starting and stopping at your zipper teeth. But I'm just going to top stitch through the whole exterior and leave my lining facing the opposite direction. This is totally personal preference. I, I like the way this looks when you're done. And so I'll just finger press that down, zip this back up, and then we're gonna grab our exterior piece. This is the one I have interfaced. And this canvas interfaced super quick. Um, I used my heat press. I actually fused it face up so the, the water resistant canvas was touching my Teflon sheet, um, and I didn't have any issues with burning, etc. So definitely test it if you're going to be using this, but I did not have any issues. Okay, we're going to line up one of the edges and then flip it over. Make sure there's no wrinkles in your zipper. 
and let your edges line up nicely. And more double-sided tape. We'll repeat on this side. So if you are worried about your zipper shifting at all, go ahead and baste it into place. Couldn't hurt. And then we will lay our lining piece in place. So this is a little confusing because my exteriors and my linings are exactly the same, but I did interface my exterior pieces. So that's kind of how we're gonna differentiate between it all. And then we will top stitch that. And then I'm gonna leave my linings touching and um, only going to fold out my exterior. So I've got three pieces of fabric stacked there and I'm just gonna top stitch through this seam here along the zipper. And that's my personal preference. Unzip our zipper about halfway. Couldn't hurt to clip this to it now. Why not? And then we're going to bring the right sides of the exterior together and the right sides of your lining together. I'm going to take care at this seam here. Clip that together. Make sure your zipper tab gets pointed up. I guess it doesn't really, really matter, but just in case. And add a clip, and then I'm just gonna flatten all of that together, and clip. And I am using piping, so I wanna see where I've basted the piping. So that's why I have this side up. And then you wanna leave yourself a good turn hole in the lining. And so if you are like me and you kind of forget what you're doing, um, you can use a little marking pencil to notate the notches. And I may try Nicole from Sonar's trick where she starts sewing here and then comes in. So she walks into the lining versus just starting there. So let's see if I can get the camera good angle for that. Zoom in. So, so I'm walking into the lining and that just kind of helps when you're turning the bag to fold that seam in to close that hole. And I'm going to be using a slightly wider seam allowance in the lining than the exterior. So I want to make sure that my strap here is kind of straightened out so that it's not sitting at a weird angle. And I'm going to come in just a little bit to catch that piping. Hopefully I'm not just sewing through the piping completely, but hey, we'll find out. And you also want to make sure that you're catching the other side of the bag too. This piping is insanely thin. Like I can't even really feel it. That's what she said. Um, yeah. Like normally with like piping, I can feel the edge and know that I'm like right next to it. But with this, I'm not really sure. Okay. 
Okay. And then for that zipper tab, we wanna make sure we're right next to it, but not sewing through it. And then we're in the lining, so we're gonna increase that seam allowance just a little bit. And I'm getting close to the little mark where I'm going to walk out of the lining. trim our seam allowances. You could use, I'm going to use my pinking shears. Just because why not? Just because why not film it blurry? going to trim it down at the zipper but not through my wristlet strap. Okay, that's a little too thick. We'll use these. Hopefully I've left enough of a turn hole. Not sure. Unzip my zipper all the way and then I'm gonna pull my lining out. Your exterior out of your lining. push up against the outer edges. Okay, cool. Push out at that zipper tab. It's an important part. Why is it so blurry? So there's no zipper tab on this side. I don't need to worry about pushing it out as far. Trim my little thread there. And we'll go back to the exterior and continue pushing along that edge. You can unclip here. push out our lining and then we're going to sew that opening. inside of our exterior. And I like to use my fists and then kind of move my fingers into those rounded corners. And then poke out where your zipper tab is one more time. Kind of pull on your wristlet strap.
and zip it up, Betty. And there is your wristlet strap. It's super cute, I love it. I really like the piping. I just don't like how thin the piping is, but I do think it adds a fun touch. I got a little close on this edge. You can see there, it's kind of disappeared, but whatever. It's so cute. I love how quick this came together and I'm really, really loving this water resistant canvas. So fun. And then there's the inside. You can see this is a pocket. Grab some card slots. And then you can get four on each side. This seems really awesome. So that one's on the inside. You can see one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then if you wanted to use that as a pocket, you obviously very easily can. Um, and adding a zipper pocket to this side would be super easy, um, but I don't know if this is big enough to really have a lot of extra room for it. But if you use coins or something, you could add a little three inch pocket a three inch, a size three zipper pocket that's maybe, I mean, it could be six inches, but you wouldn't need it to be. Maybe like four inches or even five inches, something like that it would be super cute. Um, so yeah, overall I am in love with this pattern. Uh, I could see myself making a ton of these for craft shows, conventions, whatever, just any kind of selling event. Um, I can't remember how long it took to sew. You will have seen it, but I would say maybe like anywhere from 32 to 45, I would price this at. Um, I may have sewn this a little too small. I don't know. It seems good though. So you could maybe even make it longer if you wanted, but it seems good. I don't know. I'm just used to a longer or wider wristlet strap. Um, but yeah, thank you so much to Kristen for allowing me to make a video for video tutorial, video tutorial for this wristlet. Um, I'd love to know if you guys pick it up, if you make it, what you think of it, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. If you're not already subscribed, I would love to have you subscribe so that you get notified every time I upload a video. Um, just gratuitous like, share, subscribe situation. Okay, bye.